Welcome to our next training video in 2 Timothy and now focusing on 2 Timothy chapter 2 verses 8 to 19. These are quite serious verses in this letter and we should take them to heart and take them seriously. This is not an academic exercise and we need to keep that in mind as we read these words because in them we find life and death as we'll see now. But getting into our passage in the context of our passage, when, if you've read chapter 1 up to this point, you will know there's been two things we need to keep in mind. One, of course, is the personal call to faithfulness to Timothy, in particular to the ministry that he's, that he's received. For example, fan into flame, don't be ashamed to testify, join me with suffering in, in suffering, keep as a pattern of sound teaching, guard, guard. These are all calls to faithfulness, to the apostolic message, particularly known as for the gospel or what you have heard from me, the good deposit. It's, it's, it's for the gospel that he's heard from Paul, the apostolic message that Timothy should not be ashamed of, join Paul in suffering for, keep it as a sound pattern of teaching, the measuring line, the yardstick, and guard it with his life. And of course, he will do this by the power of God, with the help of the Holy Spirit who lives in us. But notice, there's also a call not just for Timothy to be faithful to this, but also he needs to replicate himself. He needs to be strong in the grace uh, in, in Christ Jesus, in the grace that is in Christ Jesus, which relates to these ideas. But particularly also what you have heard from me in the presence of many witnesses, this this good deposit, the gospel, he needs to entrust it to other faithful men who will be able to teach others also. Now, keeping this in mind, this is the context of our passage. The big question here is why? <laughs> why should Timothy be doing all of this? Why is this so important? Why should he suffer? Why should he not be ashamed? Why should he fan into flame? Be strong, entrust, do all these things. Be a good soldier, as is mentioned by Paul later, um, later on. Endure hardship. Be a strong athlete competing according to the rules, being a hardworking farmer. Why should he do all these things? We've already seen a bit of an eternal perspective in those analogies, but Paul really brings this out. He gives us two big reasons in these verses. And the first one is really verses 8 to 13. And it's the general message here is that basically the way of the gospel is from the cross to glory. And we're going to see these themes highlighted. And I just want to make you pick up something. Paul starts off with Jesus. From there he moves to himself as an example. And then he moves generally to the Christian, from Jesus to I, Paul, to we, the church, in relation to the gospel. Now, Jesus, who's the person of the gospel, Paul reminds Timothy, he says, remember that he was risen from the dead, and he's the offspring of David. Both these points are important, particularly risen from the dead, which you'll notice is a recurring theme in this because Paul's reminding Timothy here continually of eternal life, salvation, glory, resurrection, all themes relating to eternity, the future. And Paul shows as Jesus was risen from the dead, he suffered on the cross, but he's risen from the dead. Keep in mind, says Paul, I am similarly, the reason I do my ministry is for the salvation that is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory, that the elect may obtain it. Again, these themes relate to eternal life, salvation, glory, resurrection. The reason Paul is doing what he's doing, it's for the sake of the resurrection of the dead. Similarly, he reminds that all Christians, the hope they have is that they will also live with Jesus, that they will also reign with Jesus. Again, this theme of eternal life. But the way to that is suffering. And not because we earn salvation by suffering, it's a result of, of being with him, identifying with Jesus. Because as Paul says, because of this gospel, that's why he's suffering, being bound with chains, and that's why he is enduring everything. He's suffering. And he tells that all Christians identify with Jesus' death, and therefore they too need to endure, because all of us will suffer. He'll bring out this point a little bit on, 
in 2 Timothy 3 verse 12. Those who desire to live a godly life in Christ Jesus will be persecuted. And so we see again the theme of suffering and endurance is the theme of living for the gospel and identifying with the gospel of Jesus, the path of Christ, which is exactly what Jesus said in Mark 8.34. Those who want to follow me, if you want to follow me, you must deny yourself and take up your cross. Identify with this road. You die with him. You identify with him. But also, there's another theme here, and it's how do we know that this eternal life is secure? How do we know that suffering for the gospel, enduring for the gospel is worth it? Well, it's God's faithfulness. Notice the offspring of David. This is a testimony, the Old Testament hope of God's faithfulness in fulfilling his word as promised in the Old Testament. The resurrection of Jesus is a testimony to the Old Testament reality that he is the Messiah. God has been faithful to his word. Similarly, even though Paul is suffering, the word of God is not bound. God will remain faithful to his gospel message. But also, not just faithful in the hope, but faithful in judgment. This is sort of a transition point. When you look at verse 12b and verse, 12, and verse 13. Because Paul also reminds us that those who are faithless, who deny Jesus, who refuse to identify with him, who are faithless, notice he promises God will also deny them. He will deny us. Why? Because he remains faithful. He cannot deny himself. Those who cling on to the promised hope that is in Christ Jesus, who is with him, who is identified with him, God will be faithful to his promises that we will live with him, we will also reign with him. But of course, those who deny him, who are faithless to him, he will also remain faithful. He cannot deny himself and they will not inherit eternal life. They will not live, they will not reign with him. There's a warning here. This is the only road to glory. It's following Jesus and it will be cross-shaped. So that's the first reason. Eternal life is at stake. But secondly, there is this reality of false teaching. If Timothy is not going to be faithful to his call, then this is what's going to happen. False teachers are coming in and they will come in and they will destroy. And Paul reminds him in verses 14 and 16 to 18 of false teachers, the type of things they will do. Timothy's called to remind them of these things, the truths of the good deposit, the gospel. But interestingly enough, notice Paul says not to quarrel about words. Now this might sound strange. This is not about splitting hairs. This is particularly a better way of translating it is to dispute. Meaning, as Timothy's going to remind them of these things, the good deposit, the gospel, the trustworthy saying, the hope we have in Jesus, there will be those who will dispute the apostolic message. And Paul distinctly warns Timothy not to allow this and to command people to charge them before God not to dispute the apostolic message. It's no good to them. It only reads to the ruin of its hearers, literally the destruction of its hearers. So we see one of the aspects of false teaching is disputing the apostolic message, its validity. And then later on in verses 16 to 18, Paul mentions, but avoid irreverent babble, which literally means pointless talk. And particularly he expanded on this before, this is sort of his closing words in his first letter, is that those who reject the gospel, the true teaching of Christ, they will opt for a false knowledge which in the end is pointless teaching, it has no profitability, it has no eternal significance, there is no eternal life in these things. And notice, it leads to ungodliness, antichrist likeness and their teaching will be like Grand Green. In the end, it will spread through the body and destroy the body. It will lead to the church's death if allowed to continue. So conversely, Rather than allowing, disputing, and irreverent talk, pointless teaching that's false and not based on the gospel, which will destroy his church, Timothy is called to faithful teaching. Particularly, what makes a faithful teacher is this little phrase, rightly handling the word of truth. Now, this might be a bit lost to us, 
It's, it's the idea of cutting straight, if you wanted to translate it that way. And cutting straight, for example, like plowing a field, making a straight line, or for example, making a straight pathway. That's the idea here. So rather than disputing the message and seeking alternatives to the message, like detours, Timothy is called to cut the path straight, to keep to the apostolic message purely and point people directly, as it should be, from the word of truth, the good deposit, the apostolic message. But it's not just that. Those who listen, those who are part of God's church, who are built on the foundation of the gospel, they too have a response to faithful teaching, and they too need to respond to false teaching, and that is they need to depart from iniquity. And what is fascinating here is that Paul uses number 16. He's actually quoting bits of number 16, the sons of Korah. There's a direct correlation here. The sons of Korah rebelled against Moses as God's prophet, rebelled against his teaching and called others to follow them. They were false teachers. And ultimately, Yahweh, God, called Israel to side with Moses and to depart from iniquity, depart from the sons of Korah, who were then destroyed. Remember, if we are faithless, God will be faithful, even in his judgment. And the sons of Korah were destroyed. And Paul's making a direct correlation here. Is the apostolic message is in the line of the Mosaic message. They hold the words of Christ. To reject their message is like being like the sons of Korah. And we are called to move away from them, to depart from iniquity, not to indulge them. And so what we need to take away from this section the two big whys, of course, is faithfulness to the apostolic message implies suffering, yes, but also the hope of eternal resurrected life. That's the big reason. And therefore, by all means, Timothy, by all means, St. Peter's Church, keep the gospel pure, teach it straight. But also false teaching disputes the apostolic message, proposes an alternative, but ultimately it leads to a wicked life and death. Therefore, avoid it and do not identify with it like the sons of Korah. And that, we would say, in a nutshell, is what this section of 2 Timothy is about.